Yeah, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another Giants video. Welcome back. I need a haircut. What else is new? Slow news day, but this article did pop up on my feed. The Giants somehow land Jamar Chase in the latest PFN mock draft. And before I even get into it, you guys know how we feel about PFN. You know, first of all, shout out to PFN because they make a great mock draft simulator. It's one of the only ones out there that actually allows you to do trades and basically any trade scenario, do any type of draft scenario for free. I appreciate them. I love you, PFN, for that. They have one of the best mock draft simulators out there. But if you guys have been tuned into the live streams over the past couple weeks, I know I didn't get to get one, get to do one this past Friday. But you know, usually every Friday, I'm out there. I bring a couple YouTubers on. Sometimes I even bring a couple of you guys on. We do a mock draft with the PFN mock draft simulator. The thing that always gets to us is their big board. <laughs> the PFN big board, it's kind of whack sometimes. I mean, they still got guys like Tamori and Terry you know ranked all the way in the sixth round and, and like it makes no sense that's just one of the many examples like they got um they got the edge rusher that i like out of oklahoma ronnie perkins and i do like him but they haven't graded him graded as like a second round player and it's just like i right, pfn you're kind of tripping a little bit your rankings are kind of out of whack and it's it's like that for some not all of their players so when i saw this i was like oh did, did pfn update their big board and it had jamar dropping or something in their big board but no it's just it was a crazy type of draft so as you can see the article is originally by giants wire you know you click on the link and then you go over here let me switch tabs real quick to the actual pfn seven round mile draft and we're gonna take a look at it to see how jamar chase drops to see if this is realistic enough and honestly to just take a look at what they have us doing in seven rounds because it is a seven round mile draft so first they got trevor going no surprise there then they have zach wilson going to the jets no surprise there First big surprise, Philly trading up with Miami to take Justin Fields. Um, yeah, that's a big surprise. I mean, I think Philadelphia could definitely be gunning for a quarterback in this draft. And, well, it wouldn't be the first draft that they trade up in to get who they believe to be their franchise quarterback. Then you got Atlanta taking Trey Lance. So right there in the first four picks, we got four quarterbacks going in a row. I don't know if that's ever happened before in NFL history. You guys, you guys let me know about that. Has that ever happened before in NFL history? So that right there that's definitely gonna be one for the history books regardless that's that's amazing right four quarterbacks going in the first four picks and it's the top four of the class so the rest of the guys we know are not gonna be QBs for a while you got Cincinnati with Penny Sewell you, they better do that and then the first wide receiver surprise Miami taking Devontae Smith now we haven't seen this this type of mock in a while back when the Devontae Smith stock was at an all-time high everybody had the Devontae Smith fever you know, we saw Miami taking him at third overall over Jamar Chase and whatnot, but it's calmed down since then. Now we see them here with the choice of all three receivers still taking Smith. Can I see that happening? Yes, I, I can see that happening. Detroit taking Jalen Waddle. This is where it gets me a bit more. I'm like, Jamar is still on the board and they still elect to take Jalen Waddle. And in, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if Detroit would do that. I don't know. Does Detroit really value Waddle over him that much? Maybe they do. But um, is there a chance that both of these guys go before Chase? Absolutely. The thing now that I'm looking at is, is there a chance that any team between 7 and 11 doesn't take Jamar Chase? And looking at those teams, you know, you got the Panthers. They have a pretty good wide receiving core. The Broncos, they have a young up and coming wide receiving core. Dallas still has a great one, but then Minnesota traded up. It's like, yo, any one of these teams I could realistically see passing on Chase. Maybe not the Panthers, but they take Christian Derisaw. They want to improve their line a bit. I can see that happening. Once again, maybe they re-sign Curtis Samuel or something. You know, you still got Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, and Curtis Samuel. You have a strong wide receiving core. Denver with Co Cortland Sutton, and they took a couple wide receivers last year. They're like, we're going to stick with our guns and see how these guys develop. And then Minnesota... With Justin Jefferson, you know, Jamar's teammate, and now they're taking Kyle Pitts because they released, you know, Kyle Rudolph. That that makes a lot of sense. So somehow, some way, guys, somehow, some way, Jamar Chase drops to the Giants at 11. And I'm going to tell you this right now. This is not impossible, but it damn sure is improbable. This right here, the chances of this happening is so incredibly slim that I, you might as well say it's not gonna happen am i happy about it of course 
Bada pa pa pa. I'm loving it. Yo, don't, don't, don't sue me, McDonald's. I'm not sponsored by McDonald's. YouTube, do not copyright this video. But you know who I am sponsored by. Support for the hub is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They obsess over the technological developments to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, and I got an exclusive offer for you guys. 20% off plus free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code HUB, H-U-B, at manscaped.com. So yeah, I just had to get that in there, guys. Come on, come on now. Just had to get that in there. Anyway, <laughs> but it, does Jamar drop to the Giants? Is there a chance it could happen? Of course there is. It's draft day. There's a chance that a lot of things could happen. Is there a chance that this particular situation happens? I mean, listen, it low-key makes sense. Am I crazy in saying Am I crazy in saying it low-key makes sense? Four quarterbacks going the first four picks. I think that's the... I think that's the thing that stands out the most about this draft. A lot of people have, you know, in their own mock drafts, four quarterbacks going in the, four, the first four picks, but I really can't tell if, oh yeah, it, it literally says it right here. Not once in the history of the modern NFL era has quarterbacks gone one, two, three, and four. I don't realistically see that happening. I think that's the most crazy thing out of this entire first round that they have mocked here, and I, I don't expect it to happen this year at all. I really don't. So that, that alone shakes it up, right? I, I still don't see Jamar dropping to us, but this, you know, this situation, barring those one, two, three, four, you know, from five to 11 is low key kind of realistic. Like both of these guys could go above him, right? That for sure could happen. It's whether or not the teams before us still pass on him. And with Carolina, Denver, and then Minnesota trading up, even if Dallas was there, it's like, yeah, I can see them passing on him. So I would love it if this happens, but you guys let me know if you think it's realistic or not. And then I'm going to take a look at the rest of what the Giants did in this seven-round mock. So we're going to switch back to the, um, I think it's a, a Giants Y article. We're going to switch back to this real quick to see what they do, because I'm not going to scroll through all the pages. And this is what they got. They got in round two. The Giants selected my favorite tight end in the draft, Pat Fryermute. And bro, let me tell you, if we get Jamar Chase and Pat Fryermute, it's a wrap. It really is, bro. You call the draft a day. You you have success there. You you got the best wide receiver in the draft class. Exactly what we need for this offense. The guy is a hybrid of Des Bryant and Hakeem Nicks, but me, but at even at an even higher level. Like just think about that for a second. At an even higher level, you you get that guy. He falls into your lap, and then in the second round. You get the best pass blocking tight end in college football. It won the best blocking tight ends in general in like the past three to four years. And he's still a great receiving tight end as an overall package. He's probably the best tight end in the draft as an overall package. I'm, I'm gonna say that again. Cause I know there's a lot of Kyle Pitts truthers in the comments and I like Kyle Pitts. He's the best receiving tight end in the draft. If we're talking overall, it's Pat Fryermu. You get that guy. Another guy that's a perfect fit for the offense. That's absolutely gonna help us out in any way. The guy's offensive tackle playing tight end. You know, you know how much a good blocking tight end could help out with your blocking problems, with your offensive line problems? Oh my god. Pat Fryer move falls into our lap. Because once again, I'm not sure how probable that is of happening. I'm gonna reference again the PFN wacky big board. And then this is what they do for the rest of the class, and this is where the draft loses me. You start off so strong, so great with Jamar Chase and Pat Frymu, and then you go and you take a USC defensive tackle, Marlon Tupelotu. I might have been completely mispronouncing that. I'll tell you this, Marlon, you got a Giants name. You got a Giants last name right there. I don't know about taking a D tackle in the third round. I'm assuming maybe we don't re-sign Leonard Williams in this situation or whatnot, or we lose Alvin Thompson or whatnot. I'm still not taking a defensive tackle in the top three rounds. I'm still looking at a corner. I'm still looking at a linebacker. I'm still, even though we got the offensive line, the offensive lineman that plays tight end, I'm still looking at maybe a guard, you know, a guard position or a tackle position. There's other positions that I value more than taking a defensive tackle in the top three. Then we take an edge rusher and Joe Tyron. I could understand that i understand the need of course i'm still wondering like what's happening with the linebackers what's happening with the cornerbacks and then you take another edge rusher and this is where you really start to lose me like i was i was kind of teetering on the edge before but you take two edge rushers back to back and i'm just thinking to myself what are you doing 
this doesn't really this doesn't really make too much sense and Hamarco Rashid is a good edge rusher by the way um he probably goes higher than where this mock picks him once again the PFN big board can be whack sometimes but the two edge rushers back to back makes no sense to me that's that is dumb in my opinion then they finally take a corner in Cal Bynum in the sixth round and a Kent State receiver Isaiah McCoy in the sixth round as well I don't understand this at all. You take the corner higher than the sixth, man. You take him in the third or the fourth. And that second wide receiver, okay, that makes sense. You want to get another receiving weapon, but you already got two of the best receiving weapons in the entire draft in Frymu. And um and uh why am I forgetting Jamar Chase's name, yo? In Frymu and Jamar. So uh, you could probably use this on another depth or something, but you start off so strong and then you really lose me with these three picks right here in my opinion you know what i'm I'm even include the corner because it's just the priorities aren't there in the correct order in my opinion but you guys let me know what you think put your comments down below is this pfn mock draft is it a yes or is it a no that's it for now thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share i'll catch y'all in the next one